Welcome back to the strip, I mean the garage, and welcome to the amazing, fantastic MT10. Now the MT10 is a bike I've not ridden. R Ruth, do you mind popping back a bit later? I, I just need to get this intro done and I'll, I'll catch you a bit later on, yeah? Sorry about that, just a bit of practice going on before we open later. So, back to the MT10. So this is a bike I've not ridden since 2016 when it first came out. It's a bike I really enjoyed, I really liked it when I first rode it, but I've not revisited it since then because I've struggled to get on Yamahas. Now I'm working directly with Yamaha UK, I can now got access to Yamahas and we can start to test a few more Yamahas. So the MT10 is a bike I've not ridden since 2016. When I rode it before, absolutely loved it. There was a few little niggles, you know, the throttle response wasn't great. You know, it was like when Euro 4 first came in, the manufacturers were struggling to sort of work out how to get decent throttle response and meet the emission regulations. I'm interested to see how this new one has, is an improvement over the old bike, but I'm sure it is. I'm sure it'll be great. Um, candy, I, I just said to Ruth, can we, can we do it in a half hour or so? Yeah, do you mind? Cheers, thanks. So, so yeah, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how this rides on the road, what it's like, because I, I remember this being a fantastic motorcycle, so I'm really, really excited to see what those changes are like for on this new model. So if that sounds of interest, I just said to Ruth and Candy, uh, sorry, what's your name? Sarah, Sarah, so, yeah. I just said to uh, Ruth and Candy, can we come back in a half hour or so and we'll get started then? Cheers, thanks very much. So, if that sounds of interest, grab yourself a cup of something warm or something cold, maybe a G&T, a bit of a cocktail. I'm feeling fruity today. And uh, Chopsy, roll the intro. So new for 2023, we have a few little things on this bike. Mainly, the main changes for 2023 is all of the electronic suite from the R1. So this is, I think, is the first Japanese super naked to have the full suite of electronics, like an Italian bike, you know, slide control, greedy control, which you can turn off from the traction control, you know, adjustable traction and wheelie control independently of each other, a full IMU, you know, th this has got the full bells and whistles. And obviously for Euro 5, they've had to put extra catalytic converters on and all that sort of shebang to meet those, you know, legislation, but they've added titanium headers to this bike to compensate for the extra weight. Because it's now quieter, we've got vents up here to allow a bit of that beautiful cross-plane soundtrack out while you're riding. So, um, yeah, let, let's fire it up. Listen to this. Oh, Orgasmatron. This machine is the Orgasmatron. I, <laughs> I used to say the original one looked a bit like a transformer. It still does a bit with those headlights. It's not an Autobot, it's not a Decepticon. It's an orgasmatron. Oh. <laughs> oh dear. Um, lovely. So for this year, as I say, the big change is the electronics. And what I've got set up on this bike, I've got it in the A mode which is the most aggressive mode. And I've actually turned off the wheelie control in the OA mode as well. Then why wouldn't you? You want an MT10? Everyone knows it's a hooligan's bike. I'm a hooligan. I'm turning the wheelie control off, but I've still got the traction control on. So uh, that's fantastic. And I think, you know, because it's set on the mode, when you turn it on and off, it remains off because that's how you've configured your mode. So with this electronic package, it's got four different modes and you can go into the menu, you can customise everything in each of the modes exactly how you want it. So, I mean, it's unusual for a Japanese super naked or, or Japanese bike in general, really, to allow you that level of customizability you know, that the European brands are offering, and even better than what the European brands are offering. So, 
You know, that whole electronics package, I love it. Let's talk first of all about the sensible stuff, because there may not be much sensible stuff mentioned in this video. But the sensible stuff, the riding position, it's actually really comfortable. The pegs are nice and low, so it feels you've got a nice, you know, you've not got a real cramped leg. I'd say you've got more room in the peg than the uh, Tuono. It's obviously got completely different rear sets to the R1, even though it's the same frame. Oh, it's a bit shit, isn't it? So the pegs are really comfortable. I've, you know, I'm, I'm sort of sat all on my bum, so I haven't got any sort of weight over the front. You know, it's quite an upright position. I maybe would have preferred a little bit more of an aggressive riding position. You now it's a comfortable position. The seat is really wide, really wide. Even my big fat ass is fully supported on this. And I think this is going to be really comfortable. Your legs around the tank, it feels very wide in the middle. You know, it's a straight four. They tend to be quite wide. So, you know, you've, you've got a nice bit of tank to grip here, but it's quite wide around the middle. But the position is sort of upright, very comfortable. I know for this year, they've put a longer rear shock in it and sort of jacked up the rear a little bit. I mean, e even with that, I, I feel like I could perhaps do with a little bit more weight on the front. Probably my weight, I'm 20 stone, I'm probably squashing. I probably need to up the preload to bring back that sort of aggressive stance and weight over the front, so I might have a play with that. So sort of another initial impression is the front brakes are not brilliant. I know Yamaha do get a bit of stick about their front brakes, but this model has a full Brembo master cylinder, but it, it does lack bite at the front. You know, when you pull it, it's got power, but it lacks a bit of feel. It feels a little bit wooden the brakes which is a little bit of a shame I mean that could just be the pad material it's possible it's this bike perhaps it wasn't running properly and the pads are glazed a little bit but the front brakes that they do lack a bit of a bit of bite you know you've got to really start pulling them it's still got um no, it hasn't got braided lines it's rubber hoses as well so you know put some braided lines on maybe change the pads and you should be able to get a bit of nice feel from that front brake but it's not as uh it's not as good as its European counterparts. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Slow, slow down, Chopsy. This, <laughs> this is very much like the Tuono to ride. Very, very much like the Tuono. And I'm so impressed with the throttle response. I mean, the early bike was very snatchy. I mean, this is in the most aggressive mode. And the throttle, yeah, it, it's it's a, it's aggressive, you know, it's the power's right there, but it's not snatchy, you know, it's not a snatchy feeling throttle. I hate snatchy throttles. This isn't snatchy, it's just nice and aggressive, you know, and if you don't want that, you can bang it back into the B mode or the C mode if you want to flatten the whole bike off. But I like that aggressive power like that, you know, that, that ability to lift the front wheel on commands. <laughs> this is my sort of bike, this. It's also got some other features, you know, you've got the cruise control on this, it's got cruise, but it won't work below 50 miles an hour, I don't think, or you've got to be in fourth gear. So there's some restrictions around the cruise control, but it has got it. It's also got a speed limiter, so you can actually set a speed limiter on this. So you could set a speed limiter for 70, so you could never speed on it. So you could be, well, on a, on a motorway, of course, you don't want to be 70 through a 30, but you can set a speed limiter. So, you know, it's a, it's a night could be a useful little feature with such a, a mental motorcycle. So you've got cruise, you've got speed limiters, you've got a quick shifter and blipper up and down. You've even got a power outlet on the top there. So, you know, it's fully kitted this. And I think this is about 14,000 pounds, just over 14 grand, I think. And this isn't the fully, fully kitted version. Obviously they do the SP version of this bike. This is the standard one. Morning Hoxie. It's got Kyoba, Kyoba, Kyoba suspension, fully adjustable. And actually that the suspension feels pretty nice. It's quite a sporty feel. It feels like it's got a decent amount of support. I'm actually really liking the suspension on here. I know this isn't, whoa, front brakes. Yeah, a little bit wooden. I know this isn't the SP version, but I don't think that matters. The suspension feels really good. We'll see in a minute. Hopefully I'm gonna get some dry road so I can push on this a little bit to see how it handles. But I've got really high hopes for this. I mean, it's based on the R1 for heaven's sake. They're gonna to have to really cop it up for this not to handle. It's got an IMU as well to, you know, the slide control, 
cornering ABS, cornering traction control. You know, the very best of the best. Electronics. <laughs> I don't know what this flashing light is here. It just flashes all the time. It's like, behave, I might have to turn that off. You can turn that off, I think, in the, uh, in the menu, but that's just flashing away. You've also got adjustable engine braking, and it's got quite a lot of engine braking. I think in the A mode, I've got it set to engine braking 2, which I think is the, is the, more, is the lesser one, but no, it's not too bad, but sometimes it sort of surges forward a little bit, but not too much. I can certainly live with that. Oh, we got wet roads. Bugger off. Bugger off for your wet roads. And it's also very much like the Tuona. You know, when it revs, you can't... Normally a straight four, you, know, you get it to four or five thousand revs and it sounds like it's screaming. You, you can tell it's revving. This is like the Tuono with that cross-plane crank on this. It's very much like a V4. I mean, you know, five, six thousand revs. And I guess that's why that's got the flashing light, because you don't feel like you're doing 6,000 revs. It feels like you're doing less than that. So that's probably what that flashing light is, just to remind you that, no, you are actually uh, starting to rev it a bit. And then, of course, the fuel efficiency is affected, because that was always sort of like the Achilles heel with the V4 motors and the crossplane motor, you know, is the fuel consumption. They do like a little bit of a tipple you know, and, and for this year, Yamaha yeah, say that they've, in, they've improved the fuel efficiency of this engine. It's got a 17 litre fuel tank. So you should, you know, you should be able to get a decent amount of range out of this. You don't buy a V4 and then moan that it uses a lot of petrol. You know, you accept that before you buy it, that it's going to be a bit thirsty. I can certainly live with uh, the thirst and the drinking problem this bike may have. But it may be better for this year. We'll see how we get on with it. Oh, it just sounds so bloody good. She weighs 212 kilos, so it's not the lightest. You know, it's certainly not the lightest bike out there. It's equivalent to its Japanese rivals, you know, but it's a little bit weighty to, compared to some of its European rivals. Oh yeah, this is, this is beautiful, oh, wet shitty stuff, ah, I'm liking this, that power just surges in, it's a very naughty bike this, <laughs> this is a very naughty machine, this is one of those machines that I shouldn't own, <laughs> because I don't possess the self-control, oh to ride one of these on a, a regular basis. Oh, it's all a little bit shitty. It's all a little bit shitty. Oh, masses of runoffs of water. Oh, I'm gonna have to clean it now. You don't look like a policeman at all. I can tell, even how I've, you know, the few bits of dry road I've had so far, I can see. It handles beautifully. Oh, wet bit on the corner. What are you doing to me, weather? Oh. I love that wine when you bang it down through the box. Sounds wonderful. The grit in the road. Grit or water, one of the two. I don't think it sounds any worse than the Tuono. I really don't. It sounds exactly like a V4. The power delivery, the feel from the bike. It feels exactly like a V4. Why don't more manufacturers adopt this cross? You know, they're all doing it for the cross plane. Twins and parallel twins. Why don't more manufacturers? Go for it on the straight fours because, oh, wet bit. You know, it makes the bike absolutely rampant. I'm not even giving it full power. I'm not even opening it right up. That's just, that's three quarter throttle. That's three quarter throttle. Oh, listen to that. 
a standard pipe. Ah, oh, the orgasmatron. Oh, K1600 here. Afternoon set, miserable. What's it pull like from really low down? So sort of fourth gear, let's do a bit of a chug on it. 2,000 revs in fourth. Pretty good actually. It doesn't, you know, it's not rattling your teeth out. It didn't like it. It didn't like it that much, but that's pretty reasonable. Why is this person indicating right? The road's just going to the right. You don't have to indicate if you're going around a corner. Yeah, the handling's good. The suspension's great. I mean, what's, what's the SP like? I don't think you really even... <laughs> hey! I don't think you really even need the SP. This is really good. Bit. Hard my wallet. Oh, nice indication. Whoa, it's fast. Woo! Ah. I'm so impressed with the uh, the throttle response. I really thought it was going to be snatchy. This. I really thought it was going to be snatchy, it's really not. One of the bad things with the electronics and the modes, you can't change the mode at all while you're riding. You have to stop the bike to change the mode, which I find a little bit odd. What you can do is you can go in and you can adjust, you know, on the fly there, the slide control, the traction control and the power. But I mean, I can't turn the wheelie control back on if I wanted to without stopping because I can't change the mode completely which is a little bit odd, I don't quite understand why you're being restricted from doing that, that doesn't make any sense to me you know, you, you can you can, uh, you can have the wheelie control off all the time, it's not like the wheelie control needs to be turned off, because that's off anyway so I don't quite understand why you can't change the mode, but if they just added the option to turn the traction control on down there, I'd be happy so if I want to go into town and you know, I'm getting a bit fed up with the aggressive throttle response I'm stuck with it <laughs> I'm stuck with it so what's going to be happening is we've got a massive group test planned well, I say massive three bike group test we've got the best of the Japanese super naked going head to head so of course we've got the MT10 we've got the CB1000R I've got that back again from Honda to include in the group test and we've got the Suzuki GSX S thousand so we're doing me and greg are doing a shootout with these three bikes greg's going to do a first ride on the gsx s thousand because he's not ridden that before i've obviously ridden the cb thousand i'll put a link to the video at the top last time i wrote that i will play with the suspension on that i will up the preload on that bike to see if we can make it feel a little bit more sporty because i guess that that's the dark horse in the that, that's the bike which maybe doesn't fit so well with the group test because that is a I thought it was a copper behind me then, it's not, it's a, it's a, it's a blood biker. But, <laughs> but that doesn't fit because that's more of a, a neo-caf, isn't it? It's more of a, a retro-y cruiser, not cruiser, but a, a roadster. So it's not an out-and-out -out hooligan machine, that. It, it's, not a, it's not confessing to be, but we'll see how it stacks up against these other bikes, but I, I'm really rather excited about that. I'm just going to hope the weather plays ball so we've got a couple of weeks to record the video and get everything done we want to do but the forecast is looking wet for two weeks. But uh, yeah the MT10 I have to say initial impressions of this bike oh, it's probably just as well I haven't ridden one of these before because this is just my cup of tea just my cup of tea and with these latest electronic updates you know the, the fixing of all the throttle response issues cruise control this is looking absolutely fantastic <laughs> and this is not even the sp version this is not even the sp version and it's still it's already fantastic i better not try the sp version it could be an expensive test ride that one so I hope you've enjoyed that little first ride. I mean, uh, the other bikes have got a bit of uh, 
Ooh, the, the bar's been set pretty darn high <laughs> with this. But this is the most expensive bike out of the three by a good couple of thousand pounds. So, uh, you know, you may not be able to afford. This is not saying, I'm not, this is not saying this is going to win by any stretch of imagination. And Greg may have a completely different opinion to me. But uh, first impressions of this, it's rather fantastic. Well, there we go, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please leave me a like and subscribe if you want to see our big comparison test because that will be coming soon. Cheers, guys. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> Oh, I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared about that. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to me. Just a bloody, bloody, bloody good bike. A bloody, bloody good bike. Hello. Hello there. Hello there. Yeah, it's my best Obi-Wan impression. Hello there. <laughs> it's like Terry Wogan. <laughs>